guys, so we are headed over to Home Depot yet again. Um, anytime that you're doing these um, home renovation projects, uh, I think Home Depot pretty much becomes your second home. So I need to get some spray paint for our um, hardware for the cabinets. I was thinking of just repurchasing hardware, but I think for now, um, the best course just to save a couple dollars is just to spray paint them. Um, I'm not exactly sure what color. I do want like a golden color, but I do want to add a little bit of brass to it. So I may have to mix two colors. I don't know. Um, so we're going to try it out. I also need to get some like uh, drop cloths because as I mentioned last time, I do want to uh, whitewash the fireplace. So those are the two projects that we're going to be working on today. Um, so I'm going to take you to the store, pick out some paint, and then we're going to come back home. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so these are the supplies that I ended up getting at Home Depot. So I ended up getting two paint trays. One of them will be for the metallic paints and the other one will be for the whitewash. I also got some latex-free gloves. I got my all-purpose uh, painting brush and that'll be for the... Uh, fireplace. I also got my drop cloth and these are the two paints that I settled for the pure gold and the age rust So let's go outside and spray paint some hardware So all I'm doing now is inserting all of the hardware ends onto this uh, leftover foam and that way I can basically spray paint all of them at once and um I am leaving some space in between and that's just so that I it'll be easier for me to get around all of them. So I've already kind of situated them on this foam board just to keep them up. So hopefully they don't like tilt over and that way it'll be easier for me to spray them. Now it comes down to the color. So like I showed you, I have pure gold and I have aged rust. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know what color I really want to go for. Um, so I kind of am leaning towards this aged rust, but Um, and then I was thinking, well, what would happen if I mix both colors? So that's what I'm going to try. So I have this little mixing bowl here. I've got my stippling brush and I'm just going to spray a little bit in here, spray a little bit of the gold and see if I like that color. It's coming out a little lighter than I would want. And the aged rust is coming out a little darker. Okay. Well, that's what happens when you experiment, right? You figure out if you like something or you don't. I kind of like it. I kind of, okay. I think I know what I'm gonna do because I don't, I don't think it's horrible. And let me bring the camera over so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right. So I like that it's got some of that, that aged look because I do like when it has kind of that antique finish, but the color is not gonna stand out in itself if I do um, just this color. So I'm gonna spray them in gold and then I'm gonna do the stippling brush and just kind of brush it over the top to give it kind of that aged look. All right, all right, let's give it a try. This is turning out to be a really nice color um, because it's not that like really, really yellow gold. So it already has kind of that bronzy, 
bronzy kind of antique gold that I wanted. So that is good. I like how these are turning out, guys. I was really afraid that this color was gonna be super yellow, which is why I got this, the uh, age rust to do on top. But this color is looking really pretty. It's not like overly in your face. All right guys, so I've given it one full coat and I'm gonna wait for them to dry. There's a nice breeze uh, right now, so they should dry fairly um, quickly. And then I'll come out and I'll do the second coat and that's all that I'm going to do actually. I thought I might add a little bit of this, but I'll go ahead and give you a closer look. But I really, really am happy with the finish. Um, like I said, it's not overly bright. Um, it's a really, really pretty aged um, gold. And I know it's gonna stand out so nice with those cabinets. So let me take off these gloves and um, give you a closer look. So this is what these are looking like. And I mean, as you can see, it's not like a super in your face yellow it's already got that like antique bronze gold that i was looking for so i don't think i'm gonna add any of the aged rust to it i think it looks good so again this is the one that i use it's called pure gold and um yeah i'm so happy that i actually went with that color and if you're unsure, always try it out first, you know, before you start putting it on because you just, you never know. But yeah, the color is just really pretty and they're, they're really gonna pop against those black kitchen cabinets. So very happy with those. So these are the other pools that we have. So we have these on our smaller cabinetry and then the longer pools on the larger cabinetry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spray paint these and get them looking the same. All right, so we've gone ahead and given this one coat. I'm going to wait for these to dry now and then give them a second coat. So that's what these are looking like. All right, so I finished spray painting first layer. Just going to wait for those to dry and then I'm going to go ahead and spray them one more time for a second layer and that's really it. I'm not going to have to spray them any more than that. So I'm gonna go back inside and I'm gonna start prepping my second project, which is whitewashing the fireplace, which means that I will have to take down some of the Halloween things for today. Um, you know, what are you gonna do? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go back inside, start prepping, show you what the prepping's gonna look like. I still have to go get those paints, which are in the front of my house. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get started with that project. Okay, so this is the fireplace without anything on it. So as you can see, see how it's got like that yellow tint? That's what I don't like. So I'm gonna try and like tame down those colors with the whitewash, but I still want some of those colors like the grayer, the darker colors to pull through. So I am going to dilute the white paint um, quite a bit. And this, I don't know if I'm going to whitewash that yet. I obviously do have to do the bottom trim, but um, I do kind of like this color. So I might just leave that. So I will have to cover that up until I decide. But that's what it looks like so far. 
So I ended up getting this brush and that's the brush that I'm gonna use to brush off any of the debris on the fireplace. And this is the paint that I ended up going with. And I got a stain blocking scuff defense paint just because it is a fireplace so it is going to see some wear. So you just wanna make sure that, you know, since you are going lighter that it'll be, you know, protective. I also got my drop cloth and my painting tray and yeah. That's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this stuff off and we can go ahead and get started. All right guys, so obviously back from Home Depot. So with that brush that I showed you, I'm gonna go ahead and brush off the fireplace, make sure that everything is nice and clean before I start mixing up my paint with the water, okay? So now I know why they tell you that you should brush your fireplace off because look at this. Look at all that like debris and dust. That is all the stuff that's just in your fireplace. You really wanna make sure, you see that? Oh boy. You really wanna make sure that you get into all of the little nooks and crannies and brush that fireplace off. Okay, so I finished um, dusting everything off. So now I'm just giving my paint a really good shake. <laughs> Sorry, Dodger game is on. Um, now you can apply it in a couple of different ways. So I was actually, I really like the way that this cleaned off everything. And I feel like it wouldn't, the paint wouldn't be so thick with something like this, but I did get a smaller paintbrush or you could use a rag. So it really is um, whatever you guys decide to use for this project. I'm gonna go ahead and try the brush since that's what I bought it for and see how um, it works out. And if I don't like it, then I'll just go ahead and switch because the best way to learn is by trying it out first. I could even go and add a little bit more water. But let me try this on, on just like a small section and see what I think. Okay, so I'm just kind of lightly dipping my brush, removing a lot of the excess. See, and I might actually want to dilute it even a little bit more just because it's still running a little, not thick, but the color is still pretty saturated. So let me just try down here. Yeah. So that's still pretty white, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and dilute the water some more. All right, the consistency here is looking a little bit better, see? All right, let's give it a try now. Yeah, see, and the way that it's running, it's not as saturated, so. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply some of this and then with a rag, 
I'm going to brush it off because it's looking a little too one dimensional and I still want some of those colors to shine through. So let me go get a wrap. Yeah, see that's more the look that I'm going for. So just brushing it on and then kind of dabbing it is making a difference there so that it's just not so yellow, you know? So I'm gonna keep doing that. Just dabbing the brush in. You really don't need that much paint at all. I think I'm gonna go ahead and concentrate the color on the yellow ones more because I do like the way the gray looks. I just didn't like that yellow undertone, you know? See that? Oh yeah, that looks way better. Look at that. So from here, difference between that and like this. You see what I mean? Major difference. Oh, this color is just not cute, you know? All right, so I'm gonna continue doing this in the areas where I feel like it's too heavy. I'll go ahead and wipe them off with the cloth. But other than that, I'm really liking the finish and the color. Make sure that when you're doing it that you're keeping with a consistent stroke. So don't go up and down and then side to side because you will see those strokes on here. So, I'm most comfortable with going side to side just because these bricks are kind of laid out, you know, uh, unevenly, the, the spacing and some of them are kind of protruding out at me a little bit more. So it's just easier for me to just give it, um, to just go uh, side to side for that wiping motion. But uh, just make sure to continue the same motion throughout. like when you guys are like uh, whitewashing your fireplace is that the more that you dilute it, it's very, very forgiving. So like you notice, I felt like I had put just a little bit too much on these darker areas. And all I did was um, just wipe off, just dab it a little bit. And now it's at the consistency where I actually really do like it. So take your time with it. Don't rush. Um, and like I said, you can really customize how light or how dark you want the consistency to be by adding or, you know, not adding that much water. God, look at the difference, guys, between this color and then this color up here. It's just, it's still keeping a lot of those different tones, but it's taken away that yellow which just always bugged me. One other thing, make sure that you're not picking up too much um, of your mixture onto the brush because if you're putting on way too much, then it's gonna, it's gonna pull in certain areas and then you're gonna get like those drips. So just make sure that you, you know, when you're picking up the paint that you are kind of brushing, the brush on the sides to remove a lot of the excess. And then when you're doing those swiping motions, keep it consistent and make sure that there are no um, like pools of paint in certain areas because they surely will run. So just make sure that if you do see those pools anywhere to continue brushing through it until it's like diluted throughout your fireplace. So this is what it's looking like so far. So see how you can still see all of the colors, um, but it just doesn't have that yellow tint. So look at that yellow, nice wash of white color, yellow. So it just, it makes such a big difference because look at this, look at how yellow it is. Oh my goodness. No, this is way better.
guys so this is what it is looking like I just need to finish the bottom trim but my goodness what a huge difference a little bit of paint can do I mean and I barely used any paint I'm really really loving the way that it looks it just completely removed that yellow color and you can still see a lot of the other colors pulling through because I diluted the um, paint and water mixture quite a bit. So as you can see, this is how much paint I have left. So I barely used any paint here. Okay guys, so that's, that's it. It took about, I wanna say like, two hours just because I was really taking my time and that's really what you want to do with these projects you want to make sure that you're taking your time you want to make sure that if you want to, to be just a little bit darker that you don't add as much water um, so that it's not so diluted but as you can see in the shot of my initial um, paint bucket I mean I barely use I, I don't think I even went through half of that and I didn't even pour that much to begin with so a little bit of white paint does go a long way and it was very very inexpensive um, I believe the white paint was only about 14 15 dollars and like I said I only use a little bit so I still have so much there um, that I could use around my house to touch up because you know white paint who doesn't need white paint um, But it made such a big difference. It got rid of that yellow tint color, which I just really didn't like um, And it gave it like a really nice fresh look for you know something that's very inexpensive very easy to do so don't be afraid to tackle on this project especially if you know you want to give it a fresh look it's a little bit outdated it looks really really nice if you have like that red brick whitewashing it or just painting it white or painting it black um, will give it such a modernized fresh look so I hope that this was able to help you if you guys have any questions please make sure to type them down below if you like videos like this make sure to like and subscribe I will be posting um, another video hopefully by Friday of everything that I've been doing in my kitchen because right now my kitchen is a huge mess. Um, like I mentioned last week, we have a few projects and everything is concentrated in that kitchen. So make sure that you like, make sure to subscribe and make sure to ring that little notification bell so that you are notified of when I post that next video. Um, so that's basically it for today, guys. I am going to leave you with that and I will see you guys very, very soon.